Our world is changing rapidly every day, driven by advancements in technology, evolving social norms, and the ever-shifting challenges we face as a global community. Today, the total daily carbon dioxide emissions from transportation amount to roughly 22 million metric tons, and it increases yearly. That adds up to approximately 8.1 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide annually. This is devastating for our planet, so our solution is to turn to the quickly advancing and ever more important field of electrically powered vehicles. That's why our team has improved EVs and infrastructure, which will guide our world to a much cleaner future. Currently, only a quarter of vehicles in California are electrically powered. In order to reach this goal of having 100% zero emission vehicles by 2035, we need to improve some aspects that people are worried about, like charge time, range, reliability issues, etc. For EVs, we're proposing two solutions to tackle this issue, solar panels and structural batteries. Solar panels use the photovoltaic effect where materials like silicon absorb sunlight causing electrons to get energized and generate an AC electrical current that powers the motor. Right now, a 5 watt solar panel costs around 3k. For an electric vehicle with around 6 to 10 hours of good sunlight, you need around 7 to 9 panels to charge if the battery has a max capacity of 180 watts. Once fully set up, the whole system can cost around 25 to 50k depending on the type of panel used. Solar panels allow reduced energy costs, longer run times, and low maintenance. However, they rely on daylight, weather conditions, and they can be pretty expensive. Also, their size and weight might limit the car's capacity. We have evaluated three types of panels for efficiency, namely monocrystalline, polycrystalline, and thin film panels. Our suggestion is monocrystalline as they had the best efficiency among the three. Solar panels are helping make transportation better, but there's still more to improve. In most EV, 25% of the weight is from the battery. In addition, they take up a significant amount of space in EVs. Structural batteries are a replacement for EV batteries and their structure allowing reduction of weight, space optimization, increased range, etc. Think of carbon fiber as the battery's backbone, giving it strength. While carbon fiber, electrolytes, and lithium ion phosphate offer nearly 100% efficiency, their energy density remains lower. Tesla, for instance, is integrating solid state batteries in their cars. Structural batteries have energy densities ranging from 50 to 150 watt hours per kilogram, depending on the materials and design. They also reduce weight by 30%, with specific power ranging from 100 to 200 watts per kilogram. Currently, most prototypes offer 500 to 1000 cycles, but we can expect these numbers to improve significantly in the future. Structural batteries combine energy storage with the vehicle's framework, reducing weight, improving space efficiency, and enhancing stiffness. This leads to lighter designs and up to 70% increase in range. However, structural batteries have lower energy density, harder repairability, and ch challenging mass production. Structural batteries are already being used by several car manufacturers, including Tesla's latest models. They function as both structural components and energy storage devices, meaning that we can't implement them in car bodies, airplane wings, and maybe even buildings. This dual functionality offers tremendous potential for industries like automotive, aerospace, and renewable energy. By reducing weight, enhancing efficiency, and freeing up space for other uses, structural batteries could revolutionize how we approach design and energy storage. Power distribution is critical, especially when it comes to transportation and electric vehicles. To charge while moving or while parked could be a vital asset to increase the range and then in turn usability of these electric vehicles. So that's where wireless power beaming, a form of wireless energy distribution, comes into play. The technology works by using a barrage of phase ray antennas to shoot electromagnetic beams at a high frequency. These beams are purposely concentrated into an hourglass shape in order to refine the power and the beam, allowing it to be more concentrated and less dangerous. 
This then allows for these towers to have a shockingly high efficiency of 97%. The first step is implementing these wireless energy distributing cells in bus parking in our area. These spots are located in urban areas, so they're often compact and there's no space for electric chargers or big changes to the infrastructure to allow for new electric buses. The next step is to implement the further improved system on pre-existing cell towers along bus routes to further test and work on its charging on the move capabilities. It would also allow for buses along these routes to have a much greater range with much smaller batteries, with basically no cost to the government. After that, we push into private transportation, passing regulations for wireless energy receptors in these vehicles. This would then expand the capabilities and usefulness to both public and private transportation. Depending on the success, a lane like Fast Track could be built for charging vehicles, allowing for those in need to go slower and charge more without creating more risks for other vehicles on the road. A single tower on a busy highway would generate 0.5 cents per passing charging vehicle. Projected figures based on 8 towers and 60k daily vehicles indicate a 12 cents per vehicle in revenue, resulting in approximately 2k daily or 550k in annual profits. This enables rapid return on investment and funds further expansion. Lastly, this system is multi-use, where if there isn't much support for charging, it can easily be used as a replacement to the current power grid. And even if everything goes to plan, these towers can still be used as normal energy distribution systems. In fact, they could even improve the current power grid due to their reliability and how harmless they are to wildlife. Sadly, this system has its drawbacks, with the primary ones being its budding stage of development, limited range, approximately 200 meters, low energy transfer, and underdeveloped safety features. Luckily, although current efficiency ranges around 95-97%, to 97%, improvements in 99% are being projected, and with the technology actively advancing in leaps and bounds, the other problems are sure to diminish later on. Onward charging leverages magnetic resonance induction and presents a promising solution for sustainable transportation and potential revenue generation. This revenue could be employed by the government as a replacement to current funds from gas and petrol taxes. This technology, which enables efficient charging without precise vehicle alignment, is in advanced stages of development with existing installations in Detroit, Sweden, and Germany. While implementation costs are significant, approximately 2 million per mile, and require on-vehicle receiver installation, which costs around 3.5k, this system offers high efficiency, approaching 90%, and operational speeds up to 50 miles per hour, not to mention its weather resistance. Furthermore, projected emission reductions are substantial, with a Swedish study indicating a potential 200,000 ton decrease in CO2 emissions from only 155 miles of equipped roadway. Current limitations, however, include receiver bulk, infrastructure costs, and installation complexities, and they are anticipated to diminish with technological advancements. From a company called PaveGen, this design produces energy by using the power of footsteps. A generator embedded into a sidewalk towel converts the kinetic energy of a person's step into electricity that could be useful for EV charging. It can be implemented in areas with high foot traffic to increase efficiency, allowing efficient and unique energy generation, costing $75 to $160 per square foot. A New York City study indicates that 2.4 million daily commuters each taking roughly 1,000 steps during their 10-minute commutes, could produce 12,000 kilowatts of energy through the paved gen tiles. This energy output is sufficient to power approximately 8,000 electric vehicles driving through New York traffic. The energy generated from this solution could be distributed to our other solutions, along with being used to power street-side infrastructure, like traffic lights and street lights for better night visibility. Not only that, but this solution can be used to collect data on foot traffic for business owners and urban planners to understand pedestrian patterns. However, PaveGen would be less effective in areas with lower foot traffic, and the moving parts could wear out over time, leading to lower efficiency. Our plan is to implement the PaveGen sidewalks in big cities like LA and New York where there is high foot traffic. This might include places like Disneyland or stadiums where there would be a lot of pedestrians walking around. This would generate tons of energy to power EVs and other technology. With our four solutions integrated together, we can create a futuristic city that looks something like this. Cars would be fitted with solar panels to charge while driving, and structural batteries to reduce weight. When there are obstructions for the solar panels, like clouds or nighttime, the option of charging via electric roads and wireless charging towers will be available. Renewable energy will power these solutions with the help of PaveGen to power the signals and lights. With our solutions, we will finally be able to see progress in moving towards a more sustainable future.